Inflation is a terrible thing. That's the worst thing an economy can have. We've just printed up money, and now it's time to pay the price of that. You have to get rid of the goddamn problem you got. And never fight the Fed. Carl Icahn is a legendary American financier worth around $18 billion. In today's highlight, he'll explain the horrifying long-term effects of today's inflation and what to keep in mind before making an investment in today's environment. We're trapped with this inflation. Inflation is a terrible thing. It's what brings down hegemonies. And you look at things simplistically. I look at it just very simplistically. That's where if you can do that and sort of understand the, the markets that way, you should be successful over a long period of time. And right now, there are real problems because um, inflation is a terrible thing. And once you have it, it's, it's almost like uh, uh, being uh, drug dependent, you know, and it's very hard to get rid of it once it starts. I mean, I remember the 70s, but it takes out countries, it takes out of Germany's. And I think um, Powell is very right to do anything he can to stop this inflation that's coming on. And, and the real surprising thing is that you haven't had it before, because for the last years, we've been just printing up money and just giving it out. And um, what, one of the major problems is, I think, and, and nobody's blamed them, but it's corporate America. It's the um, the uh, CEOs, rubber stamp boards, and the money is, has been very cheap. So they've been able to borrow money very cheaply. But instead of putting it back into production, they've taken that money, borrowed more and more, and bought stocks at very high valuations. And now it's time to pay the price of that. You, so you'll have more and more uh, debt coming due or interest rates to pay at higher prices. And that is a problem as far as earnings are concerned. And aside from that, household net worth, I would say median household net worth is is um, really non-existent in this country. So half the, half the households have no net worth. And the other half, except for the very top 10%, I think are very concerned about what's happening. And, and they're looking at their net worth, which is the market and their homes. You have to be very concerned about that. Yeah, Carl, eventually, I'm sorry. In this, yeah, ahead, yeah, in this, in, in this, so in this kind of high inflation environment, you know, you've been through, you know, dec many decades, ups and downs. How does this environment affect what you do and how how you play the game right now? Well, we're very hedged, and as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, short the S and P and short different companies. And what what I look for are companies that have some hidden jewel and. That's served our purposes. We, we find a company with hidden jewels and, for, and are either not well managed or the uh, boards are rubber stamping too much debt or whatever. And we get it and we get it on those boards. And eventually, you know, sometimes you have to replace the CEO. And a lot of these companies are doing are, are doing well. So um, you take CVI, our, our refinery, our refinery, I mean, it took years, but we it's it's now actually functioning greatly. You, you always have longs and shorts, you always hedged. Could you give us one give us a new long position and a new short position or what would you pick right now what do you what are you looking at i think there's going to be positions here it's difficult for me to buy any more of it but we own so uh there's things at cbi like that uh, like the stuff that we're going to be doing in the um, fertilized business for instance i mean so that's a good one um there are other ones i can't talk about at all because you know the earnings aren't out and whatever that I think are cheap. I think Crown. I think Crown Company is is really cheap in the sense that it's in an industry that is not going to be affected that badly, in my opinion. I mean, short term, nobody could talk about it, but long term, it's not going to be affected that badly in a recession. And in fact, it's growing. So you have a a company that's growing, and it's hard to compete with that one too because, you know, you you can't just go and build a a, a, a can company, you, you have to be in an area because, you you know, when, when you ship these cans, you, you have a, a, a problem of paying for shipping because, you know, can takes up a lot of space. So you have to be pretty near a large user of, of those uh, of those cans. Of those. So it's hard to break in. And so it's barriers of entrance, uh, natural barriers of entrance, which I like. And so uh, you, you, you just look for that uh, kernel. And then the other little thing is sort of the thing, I think I, I, that's going to be down the road, I think, but I think they should stick to their business. That's what I think and not be diversifying all over. Gotcha. You know, and, our, and, yeah, sorry, we're unfortunately we're almost out of time and this has been a, a big day. We talked a lot about a lot of scary things on the horizon, things to be worried about, whether it's geopolitical, whether it's inflation, stock market. You've 
been shaking things up for decades. You've seen it all, you've heard it all. Could you share any wisdom or advice to the room before, uh, before we go have a cocktail? It could be about life, it could be about investing, it could be about running a company. What do you got? Well, I, I, would, I, I would just say that <laughs> it's really funny. When I was in college as a freshman, I didn't know much about the market at all. I was always a little intrigued by it. I went out, I just was thinking back on this, and it really happened. I was basically, I got into Princeton. And I was, you know, I came from middle class background from a sort of bad high school. But I made friends with a couple of the wealthier guys and as a freshman. And one of them invited me to dinner with his father. His father came up to see him. And his father was a big deal on Wall Street, you know, sort of very well thought of, you know, really very respected. And we were sitting there. And he looked at me, he said, you know, you have some promise, you know, business, because I asked him a couple of questions about, you know, Wall Street a little bit. And he says, one thing I'm going to give you, one bit of advice. Just remember this. Hey, remember this kid. He's a nice guy. Remember this kid. If you ever get into Wall Street and this business, follow one rule. I'm, and I'm not joking. Just what he said. Never fight the Fed. And that's, and I've learned that. So I will tell them my advice is this Fed and Powell, I listen to him. And he's a serious guy and he's going to be, there's none of this stuff, you know, all these guys are saying, oh, they're going to pivot and they should pivot and this and that. And, you know, these guys that tell you that are the guy, a lot of them are telling you that because they put all these people into these companies that are overpriced. And there are many, there are many good companies now, but many overpriced ones. And I am happy that Powell really means business. And I really think he does because you must get rid of this inflation. And that, that's the worst thing an economy can have. And I think he means business. And I really respected him for coming out and saying it. And I hope I'm right. And I think there's going to be, look, I've said it a few times. I think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better, perhaps. But all these people that are telling you he should pivot, you know what it is? It's like telling a drug addict. Let's say your kid's a drug addict and telling him, okay, you took enough, you know, you, 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 you stopped drinking enough now. Okay, go have a good time again. <laughs> well, you can't do that, right? You have to get rid of the goddamn problem you got. If you have the stomach for it, Click here to watch rockstar Bitcoin trader Gareth Soloway reveal the exact date and price Bitcoin will bottom at. I didn't see this coming.